All right. So today we're going to learn about domain and range. We, we learned about domain and range earlier uh, on Tuesday, but we didn't really talk about it in detail, so we're going to be doing that today. Okay, so our objective today is that students will be able to find the domain and range of a function And express them in interval notation. All right, so before we talk about domain and range properly, let's talk about interval notation. All right, so what is interval notation? Interval notation to write down a set of numbers in an easy and compact way.
OK. So, okay, so, uh, try to think what's the best way to do this. Okay, so let's imagine for a moment the real number line. That line that has all the, that has all the numbers on it or all the real numbers on it. There's also a complex number line, or there's also an imaginary number line for imaginary numbers. You probably learned about that in Algebra 2. All right. So interval notation gives us a way to write all the numbers from A to B without needing all that English. So Okay. So for example, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and move to another board where I have more more room. So, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. So, it needs a bit more time. Let me know when you when you got it. All right, Joanne, you got it? Are you ready? Okay, no response there. Okay, you are ready. Great, okay.
Okay. So let's So let's say we want to refer to all numbers from, let's say, negative 1 to three. Like so. Or so that would be the numbers going from here to here. I'm gonna mess up this marker, but here we go. Okay, so that's all the numbers going from negative 1 to 3. Ah, dang it. Just a second. It's actually very important that this be dark. There we go. Okay. So, how do we do that? Rather than rather than uh, writing down all these words again the set of numbers would be ne negative 1 to 3 in interval notation pretty simple. In interval notation, you write down the first number goes first, the last number goes second, and um, so let's see, so there's the first number. Last number, or actually, rather than calling it the first number, let's say the left boundary. Well, nah, we'll say lowest number. Lowest is probably the best, okay. Or least, that's the word I'm looking for. Sheesh, Ugh, I'm a little bit sleepy. Least number. greatest number. There we go. Now, Now, uh, with now with this particular set of number, we are also including negative one and three itself. Those boundaries are included in the set. So these boundaries here are closed points.
closed points mean that the mean that those endpoints are included. All right. But interval notation can also be used in such a way that the endpoints are excluded. So you have could be going from negative one to three, but not including three. So let's say all numbers from two to five. Not including five. would look like this. I'll get there in a moment, but first let's draw this situation. Two, three, four, five. So we're going from two to five. This is two is included, so that's going to be solid. See, I'm just but that five because it is not included in the set is what we call an open point. which is a point excluded from the set. All right, so how would I write this down in interval notation? Well, our left point, our left endpoint is closed. So that's just going to look just like how we had it up there, 2 to 5. But the left end, but closed endpoints are brackets. Open endpoints are parentheses.
Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So. Does everyone have this down? Okay, I'll give you a few moments. 30 seconds. All right, are you ready? All right. So now let's talk about domain and range. The, the domain of a function, oh, I should have the word V here. The domain of a function is the set of all numbers that are allowed as inputs. So, Well, don't worry about this time. Okay, so the domain of a function is the set of all numbers that are allowed as inputs. To find the domain, To find the domain, you simply ask yourself what numbers can I not plug in? Now, let's try an example. Let's find the domain 
of f of x equals, let's say, x squared over, I'm going to say, 5 minus x. OK, so are there any numbers that, that I can't plug into this function or any or you know what rather than saying can I not plug in let's put it this way what numbers or what inputs leave the function undefined let's put it that way OK, so someone is saying in the chat that I'm not allowed to plug in 0. Well, actually, I'm perfectly allowed to plug in 0. If I plug in 0, let's see, f of 0 would be 0 squared over 5 minus 0. On the bottom, 5 minus 0 is 5. On top, 0 squared is 0. So you have 0 divided by 5. And 0 divided by anything is just 0. That is, 0 is a perfectly defined number. Um, uh, I can have zero cheeseburgers today. I can have zero dollars in my wallet. I can eat zero apples. Zero is a perfectly well-defined number. So not zero. Are there any numbers that I can't plug in? Any numbers that would leave this function undefined? Mm, not negative one either. Negative 1 squared is 1. And on the bottom, 5 minus 1 is 4. So you'd end up with 1 over 4, 1 fourth. Perfectly well defined. The number we can't plug in, yes, someone got it, someone got it in the private chat. It is 5. If we try to plug in 5, then we would end up with 25 divided by 0. So what does that mean? Well, that means trying to plug in 5 would require divided by 0, which would leave the function undefined. So therefore, we can't plug in 0, which means that our domain can be any, or sorry, we can't plug in 5, which means that our domain is every number except 5. Okay. Oh, someone. Let's see. Uh, someone is asking me to go back to the la to the last board for a few seconds. She thinks that she forgot to write something down. Yeah, I can do that. So just a moment. We'll get get back to this in a second.
Okay, let me know when you're ready. Person in the private chat. All right. Okay, so the, the domain is therefore all real numbers except five. We can plug in anything we want except for five because five would force us to divide by zero. Fair enough? Let's try another example. Call this one example one. Now let's try example two. Let's find the domain of g of x equals, let's say, the square root of x plus 3. All right. Are there any numbers that would leave the function undefined, or any inputs that would leave the function undefined? Anyone have any ideas? Well, let's see. I could plug in, OK, so someone so someone said in the private chat, negative 3. Would negative 3 be allowed? Well, what's negative 3 plus 3? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And what's the square root of 0? The square root of 0 is 0. So that in 0 is, you know, what number? Taking the square root is asking what number times itself gives this. What number times itself gives 0? Well, 0 times itself gives 0. So the square root of 0 is perfectly well defined. So negative 3 would actually be perfectly allowed. But what about negative 4? Well, negative 4 plus 3 would be negative 1. And that would be requiring us to take the square root of a negative, which would not give us a real answer. That would give us an imaginary answer, but for the purposes of domain, we that is, but uh, but uh, for the purposes of domain, that uh, that can that is excluded. So and so plugging negative four would be no good because that would be a negative number in there. But so would, say, negative 3.5. That would also give us a negative number under the square root. So would negative 10 or negative 20 or negative 105, negative 75,000. All of those would give us negative numbers underneath the square root. Now, negative 1 would be OK. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. But anything less than negative 3 would result in an un or would give us a non-real uh, output. Trying to plug in any number. Less than negative 3. would leave the inside of the square root negative. And that's no bueno.
So what's the domain? The domain is therefore every number great, greater than or equal to negative three. Remember, negative three itself is allowed because the square root of, because the square root of zero is perfectly well defined. So the domain of f of or sorry, this is a g now. The domain of g of x is. And this is where our interval notation comes into play. We care about the set of numbers starting at negative three and then everything bigger than it. So our least value is negative three. Now I can plug in any number I want greater than negative three. I can plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. So there is no upper bound. So the, our greatest value in our interval is infinity. OK, so is that going to use, does infinity use a bracket or a parenthesis? Well, infinity isn't an actual number, so we can't plug it in. So the right bound is an open point represented the parenthesis. Okay. So does anyone have any questions? Or are we ready to, does anyone have any questions about this? No. Okay. Okay. So, uh, would it, can I take this away? Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. So the domain is the set of all numbers that are allowed as inputs. Those are the numbers that you are allowed to plug in. What then is the range? The range is the set of values that are possible as outputs. So, the best way to find range is by graphing the function.
So let's just try an example. Let's consider the function a little bit low on time, f. Let's consider the function f of x. OK, and I'll draw a quick sketch of it. Now, we're not, I'm not actually going to give you the formula here. The formula is not that important. For right now, we're just, let's see. Something like this. OK. So our actual function, let's say that it starts down here at negative, or let's see. Let's say that it starts, yeah. Let's say that we it has an open point here, and then goes wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. OK, so let's consider this function here. Now, remember that x values, remember that the x values on a graph represent inputs. So, first, let's talk about its domain. The domain is everything going, is, represents the possible inputs, which, remember, are x values. So this region here from negative 3 to 3, this is our domain. We're going from negative 3 out to 3, open point on the left, so that's going to be a parenthesis. Whoa. Our least value, our least x value is negative 3. Our greatest x value is 3. Fair enough. Now, but what about the range? Well, the range is the, is the list of possible outputs, which, remember, are represented by y values. So this region here can tell us the range. our range. So here, what is our least y value? Well, our least y value down here is negative 2. Our greatest y value is 1. Oh, I should probably say that. Write that out at the range. Oh, wait. Ah, but this negative 2, that's on an open point, so that better be a parenthesis. OK. OK, fair enough. OK. 
Okay, so let's go ahead. So does, ev so does everyone have this down? Okay, someone needs a few more moments. Let me know when you're ready, person in the private chat who needed that. Oh, yeah. Someone said that. Yeah, uh, good point. Someone in the private chat said, isn't the three supposed to be in a bracket? They're absolutely right. That's a solid point, so this should have a bracket. Good catch. Okay, are you good? All right, will anyone yell at me if I take it away? Okay. Okay, so. What if I ask you to, fi to find the domain and range using a, using a graph and I don't give you the graph? Well, in that case, you're going to have to graph it yourself, but you are not doomed to, uh, but you're not doomed to have to graph this whole big thing by hand. Okay, so we have about three minutes left. So we have just a few small, a few small points I want to make before before we finish. First, if you can plug in any number. The domain is all real numbers. And if any number is possible as an output, the range is all real numbers. Pretty straightforward. Now, let's try an example of a uh, let's try an example of problems with this domain and range in uh, and graph it with a uh, program. You can graph a function
using www.desmos.com. I imagine you guys are probably already familiar with it, but really quick, let me just show you how this works. And we can look at an example of a problem with a domain and range that have all real numbers. So I'm just going to share screens really quick. This will just take us about 30 seconds. OK. So here we go. Went to desmos.com. Now I can click on graphing calculator. So I'm going to give you an example of, of, a, pro, of a function with a domain and range of all real numbers. Let's do f ah. of x equals y cubed. Uh, oh, <laughs> equals x cubed. Ugh. There we go. So as you can see, you know, you can plug anything you want into this. You can go as far left as you want. You can go as far right as you want. You can go as far up as you want. You can go as far down as you want. So our inputs can be any number. I can plug any number I want into x cubed, and it'll be perfectly well defined. And any number is possible as an output. So the domain of this function would be all real numbers, and the range of this function would be all real numbers. But in any case, that is about as far as we can about as far as we can go today. We're out of time. I was hoping to go over the problems from the other day that was confusing that were confusing everyone, but we'll we'll do that tomorrow at the beginning of class. So today we learned about domain and range. We learned that the domain well, first we learned about interval notation, which is a way of representing a set of numbers on a number line. We also learned about domain and range. The domain of a function is the list of number is the list of numbers that are possible or that are allowed as inputs, and the range of numbers of a function is the list of numbers that are possible as outputs. So there will be a check for understanding on this uploaded before lunch. It will just be, you know, one or two problems. You know the drill by now. If you need help on anything, contact me and I can schedule something. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Let's see. Let me know when you let me know when you got it. You got it. Okay. End session.